Alright you guys, welcome back to another episode of Roads and Traveled. My name is Marcus and today you are looking at a McLaren 720S, one of the most practical road vehicles on the market today. So what we're going to do today, uh, aside from being very uh, squished in the front here, uh, we're going to actually drive this car because that's what it was made to do. Uh, over 700 horsepower at the wheels because McLaren is very modest when they designed and produced this car uh, and we're going to see if it feels like that uh, actually on the street. So let's go for a drive. This is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> like I said, when I drove the 991 GT3 RS for the first time, I, I honestly can't believe I'm behind the wheel of this car. And I just wanna thank all of you, first off, for watching the channel, for enjoying our videos that we've done in the past, both with modified cars, JDM cars, as well as the high-end supercar stuff, which I love so much. So we're gonna go for a little rip here. Obviously, we are not on a track, and I will not even come close to the limits of this car on the streets, um, but we're gonna have some fun. So as you guys know, uh, the 720S is basically it's the first car of the new platform for McLaren. So when the 12C came out, it was you know it was pretty revolutionary to have a, a carbon tub uh, and everything like that in a package with a twin turbo V8. Sure, the sound wasn't all that crazy, uh, but even still, you've got this completely rigid chassis that changed the game, frankly. McLaren came out, when they came out with that car back in 2012, it changed the supercar game. And now, McLaren is on top, let's be honest here. Uh, this is going up against the 488, uh, among a few other cars in the same price bracket. Pretty much wraps everything that you want out of both a street car and a race car, or a hyper car, rather, into a package that you can get for a bargain. Now, I say bargain, this car costs about $350,000, but if you look at the competition that this can go up against, this is on par with, if not faster around a track than a McLaren P1, which just a few years ago came out at a million bucks, and uh, we're kind of the first cars of that kind to do anything like that. And now here in 2018, McLaren has been like, we're just gonna undercut the rest of the competition, okay? We're gonna price this at the price of a 488 and give you a way faster car. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> the downshifts are so hard too. It, it's not like, it's not that dual or the, the single clutch kind of like kick but it definitely has like a, a certain feeling about it when you downshift and when you upshift that reminds you of how robust this car actually is underneath all this pretty paint and curves and aerodynamics. Uh, this is my first time driving a McLaren on the road. I drove a 650S at Sonoma Raceway a year ago. Uh, just lead follow laps, you know, getting the feel of the car uh, and stuff like that. So it's a whole different experience actually getting it out on the road and seeing what it feels like not only to test out you know its power and steering and all the inputs but as well how it performs as a street car because this is after all a street car right you buy this to drive on the road uh and the owner of this car jesse uh whose youtube channel is in the description by the way he bought this so he can actually drive it you know you can daily this car you can take it around the city <laughs> wow that's fast Instant shifts, absolutely instant shifts on the downshift. Wow, that is crazy. You get a little bit of feedback from the exhaust too. You can hear it pop a little bit in the, uh, in the pipe there. You do get some really cool turbo noises right behind your ears, which is, you know, a side effect of having a mid-engine car with turbos on it, two turbos. And I think McLaren has a very, the right amount of, uh, turbo noises that you can audibly hear when you actually get on it. Um, it's not it's not super quiet, not so muted. Obviously, it's more muted than like an NAV12 that you get in, let's say, an Aventador SV uh, or the new SVJ, which is gonna be insane too, but 
Um, as far as a twin turbo V8 sounds, you do get some really nice sounds. Oh yeah, he's got, even the animation of the, the guy on your uh, HVAC controls here has a helmet on. Just little touches like that. You know, people say that this car doesn't have quote unquote soul, maybe because it doesn't have an NA V10 or V12, but honestly, it's got cool touches uh, that make it very special in its own right. We are being, okay, so you guys, why I didn't tell you where this road is, it is one of the best roads, but it is also one of the most highly patrolled roads uh, around this area, and we've basically got cops following us. We've seen three different ones so far, looping back and forth on the freeway. Uh, this car draws a lot of attention, especially in this color. Uh, so if you guys are like, oh, you're not pushing it very hard, I don't feel like getting Jesse's car impounded, and I don't feel like losing my license. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> on ramps, not a problem. Not a problem. All of this is no good without a little bit of context though. This show comes from a history of highly modified Japanese cars from the 90s, two of which I can think of that pulled just as hard in a straight line as this McLaren. Nick's 700 horsepower R32 GTR and Marcel's 900 horsepower Supra. Yes, of course, the 720S has a dual clutch and the aero is far beyond what any manufacturer was capable of 25 years ago. But that's my point. This car does it so easily, whereas you've got to work for the adrenaline with the 2J and RB. They're scary cars, unpredictable, borderline death traps. There's a risk involved you can feel in your spine. This car, on the other hand, is safe, calculated, and until you've reached the sound barrier, pretty calm. These are its greatest assets while also being its greatest shortcomings. The 720S is an incomprehensible engineering marvel and the fastest, most striking car I've ever driven. It's probably the closest I'll ever get to driving a spaceship and it'll make every point to let you know that, a feeling I won't be able to shake for a very long time. A 900 horsepower 2JZ is like riding a stallion, the 720S is like piloting a chariot. I, I just had to hit 20 kilometers an hour. I had to. <laughs> All right, uh, so just for perspective, that was 15 kilometers slower than the fastest I've ever driven any car ever, period. And that took like a couple seconds. If I'd stayed in it for a second longer, I would have broken my personal record for fastest I've ever driven a car which is pretty ridiculous because it didn't really, like it felt like we could have just kept going. And it, it, it pulls harder and harder with each gear. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And like the torque comes on very quickly. You're never really below like 2,500 RPM, uh, but when you're, you know, three, 4,000, Torque hits hard, okay? And it's a very, it's not like a wait for it, wait for it, smack with the turbos. It's very smooth, it's very smooth. Uh, but it it pushes you hard in your seat. You you physically feel like there's someone actually, and it, I know it seems like an exaggeration, but I'm not exaggerating. It feels like there's someone physically pushing you into the back of the seat when you hit that throttle. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is easily top three fastest cars I've ever driven. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, you guys. This car masks speed very, very easily. Um, and like we're cruising at a regular highway speed and it feels like we're crawling, like we're barely even moving, which is kind of scary. I mean, it's good in the sense that <laughs> you have to be going very fast. Um, 
for it, you know, to actually reach the potential limits of this car and what it is capable of. Uh, but it's also kind of a downside in the fact that you do have to go so far above the speed limit, allegedly, uh, to actually to actually feel like you're doing anything insanely special. All right, you guys, so we are going to do a simple test. Jesse, thanks for the idea. Uh, this is Jay, by the way. Hi, guys. So you've got a Mustang GT. Yep. Correct. Is it stock? Yes, it is stock. Uh, the only thing I got on it is the muffler delete, which doesn't change you know, the performance, obviously. Right, um, okay. But yeah, it, it is stock, yes. Sweet, okay. okay. Five liter Coyote engine, uh, obviously stock 720S, uh, and then my car with uh, catback, a standalone, and like two extra PSI. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna demonstrate how much quicker the 720S is in a straight line versus like a very fast American sports car uh, that you can get off the showroom floor and then like a slightly modified 90s sports car from Japan. So what do you say? Let's uh, allegedly race. Uh, we're not on planet Earth or so anywhere. Mexico, by the way. Mexico, yes. Mexico, and there's no one around. There's just, uh, It's completely sealed off, so it's completely safe, right? Closed course, yeah. Yeah, yep. closed course. Don't try this at home. And Jesse, just to clarify, you're still uh, under the break-in period, so you will not be using launch control. Yeah, no, I'm just going to drive straight up. It's not going to be launch control. I'm not even going to put it in, a, in track mode for suspension. So it's got full tra uh, traction control. No launch control, so it's not definitely not as quick as it could be, but you know, I think it's enough for this demonstration. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Honestly, you guys, I, I gotta give props to my buddy Jesse uh, for bringing out the car for the day. Uh, the car, this car is less than a thousand kilometers on it, which is pretty ridiculous. And also, you guys, that wing, that flow forms into the body just like the P1 had, but this is, uh, it's, this is even more subtle. And I think the back end of this car, when you like look below the tail lights, you can see like the diff, you can see the suspension, it's all exposed, kind of, not quite to the extent that the P1 was, but very much, very close to it. Um, pretty ridiculous. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video as much as I enjoyed driving this car. Once again, definitely check out Jesse's channel. The links are in the description uh, and there will be his perspective and owner's perspective of this car there. So definitely check it out and hit subscribe uh, and we will see you guys next time.